Good morning, and welcome to St. Mary's for the celebration of the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. My name is Patrick Cabrew, and I am the reader of God's Word this morning. Today, we gather before God, the creator of all things, to bless the work of our hands and hearts, especially for our brothers and sisters who have forgotten their way. You are invited to remember in your prayers and intention of this Mass for the soul of Dominic Q, requested by his God. Our celebrant is Father Bill. Please take the time to turn off your cell phone. Let us pause quietly in prayer now and prepare ourselves to enter our Eucharistic liturgy. Let us raise our voices together in song with our gathering hymn, We Gather Together. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Now, we come together to pray in Jesus' name. So let us pause to prepare ourselves to enter the mysteries of God's word and sacrament, asking for pardon and forgiveness for all that has really disrupted our relationships with God and with one another through our own sins. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt. But you shall save yourself the word of the Lord. Except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in the same. Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. And if he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to give you a little bit of a job description for a pastor. And hopefully you will find the humor or the irony in this. If a priest preaches over 10 minutes, he's long-winded. If his sermon is short, he didn't prepare for it. If the parish funds are high, he's a businessman. If he mentions money, he's money mad. If he visits his parishioners, he's nosy. And if he doesn't, He's snobbish. If he has fairs and bazaars, he's bleeding the people. And if he doesn't, there's no life in the parish. If he takes time and confession to help others and advise sinners, he takes too long. And if he doesn't, he doesn't really care. If he celebrates the liturgy in a quiet voice, he's a bore. If he puts feeling into it, he's an actor. If he starts Mass on time, his watch is fast, and if he starts late, he's holding up the people. If he tries to lead the people in music, he's showing off, and if he doesn't, he doesn't care what Mass is like. If he decorates the church, he's wasting money, and if he doesn't, he's letting the church run down. If he's young, he's not experienced. If he's old, he ought to retire. Well, thankfully, I'm only middle aged. If he dies, there was nobody like him, and there will never be his equal again. 
I hope you got that, folks. You know, in a somewhat humorous way, the pastor's job description really can highlight the gospel passage from Matthew about if two of you agree on about anything for which we are to pray, it shall be granted them by the Lord. This passage from Matthew's gospel surfaces an interesting challenge for each one of us. And that challenge is this. You know, chances are we might not agree on everything. But if we do come together to cooperate in good faith and hope because of the Lord who draws us together, he's going to present um, a guide for us. He's going to show us really what the work we can do together. And what is that work actually that we can continue to do here at St. Mary's? Well, the sacred scriptures really present then a basic and a rather familiar outline for each of us. And the prophet Ezekiel, he presents the work that the Lord is asking of us is actually is that we keep current our own calling, our own calling to be vigilant in our words and in our actions. We're to guard against wrongdoing and we are to warn others about the path of destruction that they might be walking on. In short, we actually are called to be responsible for one another. We're supposed to be aware of how our brother or our sister is spiritually. We can't turn away with indifference from what we recognize as sinful and destructive in be behaviors in others as we can't in ourselves. How often in growing up, and for those who are still growing up, how difficult it is sometimes that relationship be between parent and child uh, who can come to a point where the parent has to draw in that child again to that which is right and good and maybe to help them see a larger picture of relationships and parents too have to be aware of how they do that with their child how they have to temper sometimes their own anger, their own impatience with the child's behavior. Well, we can't turn away. We can't be indifferent. Like Ezekiel, if we fail to do so, we're gonna have a share in that other's punishment and demise. You think about a time of correction that you offered in love to help another turn away from darkness and sin. Think about a time you yourself were corrected that actually led to some healing, some peacefulness, some hope. From the psalmist, we hear that our work is really to soften hearts. Usually those hearts are our own. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart against him against the Lord. And usually we have to be then, if to soften our hearts, we have to learn how to be joyful. We have to learn how to be grateful for the blessings that we receive, how we are to be able to express that joy and that gladness because that should fill our hearts. That is what should fill our hearts. We recognize then that God is going to be our rock, that God is our foundation, that God is claiming us for a love that's never going to let us go. And he's going to continue to passion us with that love so that our hearts continually will melt before him and open ourselves to one another. And then from Paul's letter to the church, and we hear that our work is to allow love to be the fulfillment of the law. We do laws in the church not for the sake of just doing laws. We do the laws and are led to why the church has these laws. These laws are about our relationship with the Lord and with one another. The, the basis of all church law is about how we choose and how we can love one another better. It's about what we owe others, actually, as St. Paul is saying, we owe others our love. Our choices really is then rooted in respect. And it's respect in those who have marital relationships, in human life, and we're to reject all that harms 
our sense of community and relationship with the Lord and with one another. And so we heard what? To avoid the, the cardinal sins of envy and jealousy and pride, taking delight in the sins of another or in their downfall. That's not who we are. That's not who we're called to be. Our work is the work of God's love coming forth through us because it's going to be the fulfillment of all who we are. It is the purpose. And the only reason we are living is to give in that joy and thanksgiving this love that God has filled us up with and asks, demands, commands us to share that with one another. You know, this love is also revealed even when we are not in agreement with one another. It is about how we choose to care for one another and it is revealed because, believe it or not, how we love our God and how we love one another, our neighbor, is going to be the gauge of the health of this parish community. And then what we heard from the gospel, our work is about renewing our efforts to win back those who have strayed from us. Reconciliation must always be our goal. Mercy and evident concern for the well-being of one another and their spiritual health must also be our focus in why we come. Feuds, vindictiveness, fear is not going to have room within the Christian community if we are the Christian community. Rather, our time to, to pray together for guidance and trust and hope for healing and renewal actually can be the signpost of what St. Mary's can be and needs be. Christ asks us this, this today to be revolutionary in our time of forgiveness and in our concern for the spiritual well-being of others. We are our brothers and sisters keepers in this. And while the call of scripture is asked to be heeded and lived out by all believers, we at St. Mary's actually have chosen and usually in your stories there has been much suffering for the faith at the hands of others from your former countries or from this country today. In a United States that has become more pagan, more hard, more divisive and you live your faith in the midst of many different obstacles you live your faith where many voices draw people away from the call of Christ within the church you live your lives recognizing that this message of conversion, this message of mercy and charity is, is what you want, is what you desire, is what you want to pass on to future generations. So that when we gather, when we gather either in our twos or threes, we will call upon the Lord. And we're going to call the Lord not just for ourselves, but for each other. And the Lord will be in our midst. The Lord will be in our midst. And he does that each time we gather for Eucharist. Isn't that right, folks? And so each of us has a job. And each of us and others can look at us in different ways. And But that's okay. If we're faithful, if we're true, if we're hopeful, if we're mindful, if we are aware. And knowing that our lives are supposed to be about joy and hope and love and faith the lord will hear that the lord will see that the lord will be in our midst because then our lives we actually become a prayer for others and ourselves amen, amen. so do you want to stand and profess what it is we do believe i believe in one god
We are called to be people of holiness and faith. We're called to be our brother and sister's keeper, offering our guidance and wisdom to lead them to the goodness and grace of God. And so we come to our God with our prayers to help build the human family. For the church, that we be faithful to the gospel and in our spiritual and physical care of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of Christ, to bring justice to all who people who pursue what is right and good during the protest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffered pain was lost in the events of September 11, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all workers, especially the men and women laboring in unhealthy and life-threatening situations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice to be given to the unborn, the hungry and homeless, poor, the immigrants and children, the elderly and peoples persecuted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who are targeted and systematically discriminated against because of their race, creed, orientation, and economic status, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the chronically ill with many diseases and their caregivers, especially for all who face the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the men and women on the front lines during this pandemic, and for their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in St. Mary's Parish who battle loneliness, addictions, abusive relationships, domestic violence, the loss of employment, and depression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of St. Mary's who have experienced the loss of a loved one this past week, for Mary Arden and for the intention of this Mass, for the repose of the soul of Dominique Q, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a moment of silence, please speak your word, your needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all knowledge and wisdom, we offer you worship and prayers as we gather in the name of your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us gather our voices together in song as we present and prepare the gifts with our offertory hymn. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Oh, 
sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all of you who do in this, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For through the human race, for whose name? For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, we, yet we know that by testing us, we change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, and adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim. <laughs> Himself is the word that brings salvation. The hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom you, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love we offer you what you have bestowed on us the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation holy father we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. And just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven, in a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. celebrate with the Lord and to pray to the Lord in the words that he has taught us about our desire to do his will, to proclaim the kingdom, to be grateful for what we receive, and to be always mindful in how we are to forgive. And so let us say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Did you hear that amen? Amen. amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let us now offer a sign of that peace to one another. Zubinyan, the Pagmantigo. Thank you. 
Um, Chris, would you uh, please come forward? Behold the love and the mercy of God, who sent forth the gift of his Son, the Lamb, who came to take away the sins of this world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. gather our voices together in song as with our communion song how great thou art
grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Sammy, if you'd like to share with us a few of your words, uh, certainly to encourage uh, folks to come inside. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sam. Uh, I'm originally from the Holy Land. A lot of you remember me from last year, but I'm here again to support many Christian families in Bethlehem and Jerusalem by selling their hand-carved olive wood items. We have a big display inside the church, about nine tables full of nativity scenes, crucifixes, ornaments, rosaries, and one-of-a-kind pieces. These beautiful carvings make uh, beautiful confirmation gifts, uh, First Communion, and probably early, early Christmas shopping. But the reason we do this is because uh, a lot of people are scared to go to the Holy Land and those Christians rely on tourism. They rely on selling these beautiful carvings to tourists. Uh, and since the coronavirus hit, uh, tourism has been shut down. Uh, so the Christians are affected the most by this current pandemic. And another reason we do it because the Christians are decreasing day by day. We are actually 1.8% nowadays. So when we sell these carvings, we support uh, about 300 families in the Holy Land who do this for a living. So I wanna encourage you all, if you have a moment after mass to go inside the church, just take a look at what we have. We have some beautiful, beautiful things. I brought with me here across to show you the work again. This is the olive wood. The wood is about 2,000 years old. It's a very solid wood to carve, and they chose the specific wood because it's mentioned. It's been mentioned in many verses in the Bible. As a matter of fact, Jesus has blessed the olive tree. And this cross right here, they put four different things around the cross for you. Because I know a lot of people are scared to go to the Holy Land. So. For example, they have the olive leaf in the bottom from Jerusalem. They also have stones from Jerusalem, flowers on the top, and frankincense on the other side from Bethlehem. And they also stamp the 14 stations on the back to let you know that this specific cross has been walked around the stations in Jerusalem after they've done carving the olive wood. I hope I delivered my message about the situation. Uh, I want to thank Father Bill for inviting us here and supporting our mission. I'll be inside. Uh, we do accept checks, credit cards, and also cash. I have one good news for you, despite of all the bad news that I told you. We do have a hand sanitizer in there, so don't be scared to go in there. So thank you all, and may God bless. Thank you very much. I'd like to share with you uh, something that I've been uh, noticing online uh, in terms of some of the news uh, outlets and, and or uh, the blogging that seems to be happening, which has caused maybe some confusion in the minds and hearts of Catholics especially. You know, the American bishops, the Catholic Conference of American Bishops put out, they had published a, 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 a booklet actually called Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship. Now, it's a two-part, actually, uh, program. In fact, we will be giving you out copies, um, or at least partial copies of, of that. What I have to tell you is, is this. There have been uh, statements from perhaps religious leaders, Catholic religious leaders, that are going beyond and telling you how, not only how to vote, but who to vote for in this upcoming election. Well, as a priest and as your pastor, I do take it upon myself as a right and as a duty to speak out against certain forms that go against our Catholic teachings and doctrines, such as Nazism, Communism, abusive capitalism, Jihadism, and every other ungodly ideology 
We also have to speak out against particular issues like war and capital punishment, racism, abortion, slavery, unjust wages, and crimes against marriage. Now, what I'm here to tell you is this, very simply. These are the things I can talk to you about. In fact, I can speak out against a particular candidate if I so choose when that candidate takes a stance on these issues and goes against these issues. But I have to be careful not to speak out against a particular candidate. In other words, what I'm simply saying is priest, as a priest, I have to tell you to be mindful of the issues of what you will go into in November. But I can never, and no religious leader, even if you have seen it, can actually tell you who you have to vote for. And the, and the reasoning is this. No candidate, no political platform holds the entirety of what the Catholic Church doctrine is teaching about. No platform, no candidate. And so you do this with an informed conscience. You do not listen to what's online, especially what's online, and simply say, you have the right to choose whichever candidate you actually believe will help this country. And it's not just the president, it's also all your senators, your governors, your city council, your state representatives. It goes all the way down the line. And so always remember that the Catholic Church will tell you to inform your consciences. However, we will never tell you who you have to vote for and do not let others tell you. You can only vote for this one candidate. Amen? Amen. And I will be writing a lot to you in the upcoming weeks concerning this, not simply as a reminder, but actually to embolden you to recognize that you do actually have a moral responsibility to vote. But if you find yourself that you cannot vote, then that's, you, you have left your conscience be open to that. Okay, let's uh, continue and say, okay, I have to do it this way, the uh, microphone died. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God always bless and keep you from all harm. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is now ended. Go forth in love and justice and mindfulness of your brothers and sisters in need. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Did I hear that? Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Let us gather our voices together in song with our sending forth hymn. Glory and praise to our God. to share with you in any situation where you might choose a candidate who does explicitly go against Catholic Church teaching remember that when you vote you're not necessarily voting for that reason to go against Catholic Church teaching for this candidate or in other words simply is that if you yourself 
for instance, support abortion, and you choose that candidate for abortion, then you will be involved with intrinsic evil. However, if you vote for a candidate who in many ways is pro-life in a lot of other issues, but you yourself want capital punishment, you yourself want uh, racial discrimination, if you yourself, that means that the candidate you are proposed to vote for means that you yourself could be in sin for voting for that individual because it's within you and what you believe, okay? I hope I make that distinction carefully. Thank you. And oh, please have a blessed day and a good week. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defender, sin battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snare of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, turns into hell, Satan, and the other evil spirit, who prowl by the world.